Alright, what's going on everyone, and welcome to the series in which I introduce you to all of the most powerful competitive decks in the modern format. The goal here isn't to give exact deck lists as those change constantly, but rather to give you a brief overview of how the deck works so you can be prepared if you're new to the format. And today we are talking about Grixis Death Shadow, the deck that actively tries to lower its own life total as quickly as possible in order to win the game. That's because the deck is built around Death Shadow, a one mana 1313. Yes, 1313 for one. However, the drawback is it gets minus X minus X, where X is your life total. So of course, Playing this on turn 1 means it dies instantly, it's a 1 mana, negative 7, negative 7, so it's dead. But the goal is to lower your own life total as quickly as possible, below 13, so this becomes relevant. So, how does that happen? For starters, there's the mana base of fetches and shock lands are played in just about every competitive modern deck in existence. You're familiar with these if you're familiar with modern, but that shadow actually wants to fetch and shock itself intentionally as much as possible. Even if a death shadow player doesn't need the mana, they'll fetch and shock themselves just to lower their own life total. And similarly, the deck plays Thoughtseize. Once again, this is a modern staple, let you rip a card out of the opponent's hand for one mana at the cost of two life. Normally that's a drawback, but worth paying just to get, you know, your opponent's best card out of their hand. But with this deck, that's upside. So for example, you can theoretically fetch to lose one life, shock to lose two, then thought seize to lose another two, which on turn one, potentially before your opponent has even taken a turn, you're down to 15 on purpose. And this of course is in addition to whatever your opponent's doing. If your opponent is slinging burn spells, playing aggro threats, great. That just makes the death shadow relevant faster. Once the shadow deck gets below 13 life, things get really interesting and really complicated. So it's important to remember that death shadow, its power and toughness are going to change change constantly based on the controller's life total. And this makes combat super tricky. For example, if a Death Shadow player has a fetch land on the battlefield, that basically represents plus three plus three because they can fetch, shock, and the Death Shadow will grow. And Death Shadow having the ability to get bigger makes it very scary to attack into because you don't know if the Death Shadow player can just lower their own life total and then kill your attacker. It can also make back swings and incredibly deadly because like let's say a death shadow player is at 10 life with two death shadows right that means there are three threes not threatening at all right two three threes on the battlefield whatever and maybe you have like a six six maybe you're playing titan you have a six six so you're feeling pretty good so maybe you attack with the titan thinking like at worst they can two for one right they'll trade their two three threes for your six six that's fine right that's pretty decent value but the shadow player can let that damage through lose six life from your attack and now the death shadows are nine nines right from your own damage you dealt the six damage to them so now their two death shadows are nine nines and they can backswing for 18 damage and that is what makes the mid to late game incredibly difficult to navigate against death shadow players because every damage you do to them powers them up like if you don't kill a death shadow player you're just making them more powerful and for the death shadow player they're just basically constantly trying to stay on the brink of death they're trying to kill themselves as quickly as possible and then stay almost dead for a few turns while they will away with death shadows uh that's that's what the deck does basically so anyway backing up death shadow is a suite of aggro creatures namely ragavan because of course Dragon's Rage Channeler and Kroxa, which I suppose Kroxa isn't really an aggro creature, but it's a cheap creature. So first off, we have a 1 mana 2-1. When it connects with the opponent, it ramps with a treasure, gets some free cards. The Channeler is a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, but then becomes a 3-3 three, three with flying if your graveyard gets full. Um, if you get Delirium, we'll talk more about that later actually. And Kroxa is basically 2 mana, make the opponent discard something, but then from the graveyard, you can escape it, and it's a 4 mana 6-6 six, six that rips a card out every turn, or makes the opponent lose three life.
damage for every turn in addition to attacking for six so still like a, a very aggressive kind of scary creature and the key to all these is that they're cheap and efficient right one mana one mana two mana very cheap very quick very efficient ledger shredder is also popular currently this is from the new set which is why the card image is blurry sorry about that if you're watching on a big screen but this was in capenna so we'll see if it sticks around but it's a two mana one three that connives if people cast two spells per turn and that allows you to filter through your deck as well as just make another big constantly growing threat also relevant because 90 percent of this deck costs one or two mana so that's great but it can find death shadows it can find removal stuff like that and the rest of the deck is all about control first there's more hand control with inquisition inquisition of kozilek also you know hand disruption spell so it plays this in addition to thought seas and Kroxa, which means this deck is very good at just tearing your hand apart it also plays unholy heat fatal push and lightning bolt all removal and notably cheap removal at one mana and it also plays drown in the lock and sometimes terminate as well drown in the lock is both a counter spell and a removal spell the spell or creature need to have mana value less than its controller's graveyard but in modern you know most people are playing you know one to three drops so basically most of the time it's just a straight up counter spell or removal spell and terminate also just another spot removal spell the deck also plays expressive iteration and this is just about filtering look at the top three one goes in your hand one goes into exile one goes to the bottom of your library so you just get to dig and something that's worth noting here is the mana value of all these spells thought seize inquisition unholy heat fatal push drown in the lock terminate notice how cheap everything is there aren't any big four mana board sweepers while this deck does play a very heavy control game it is very different from something like blue white control where the goal is to yes play small removal spells but also play you know big expensive board sweepers so you can stall to the late game where you try to win with a big planeswalker or some game ending threat uh, of a shark typhoon right something big but that's not what death shadow is death shadow is kind of an aggro deck but not really it's really weird okay so it, it plays more spells than creatures typically like look at this canister deck canister you might know it pro player you know here he is well known for liking grixis death shadow and his list currently has 17 creatures and 21 spells which uh you know looks like a control deck right that's what a control deck would play but it still feels like an aggro deck when you're playing against it because it's playing ragavan and dragon's rage channeler on turn one to put pressure on and then while you're staving off that aggressive start the shadow deck is draining its own life total and then it beats you down with the death shadow while backing it up with a ton of removal this deck is all about like ruthless efficiency it's it's cheap quick fast efficient threats because it's really just trying to win on like turn four to five ish basically it wants to drain its own life total really quick then smash face while killing your stuff and countering your stuff so it's like it's this weird mix between aggro and control but different from like blue tempo decks because blue tempo decks are also kind of like a, a blend of aggro and control but this is more like a control deck first and a stompy deck second kind of it's really weird also all of these low cost spells is why the deck is so good at taking advantage of dragon's rage channeler because remember you have fetch lands and then you have all these super cheap spells and that can help you race to delirium as quickly as possible so it's a 3-3 flyer very early so you have a one mana 2-1 that ramps gets mana you have a one mana 3-3 flyer oh by the way i forgot to mention the deck usually plays mishra's bobble which is just a free artifact it's zero mana you sacrifice it to draw a card so it's a free artifact in the graveyard but you have these super cheap super efficient super aggressive threats then you have tons of removal tons and tons and tons of removal while you're draining your own life total and then kablamo here's a death shadow it's like a 10 10 or whatever so yeah like i said this deck is very difficult to play with or against 
Combat gets incredibly convoluted once those death shadows are in play just because they can grow really quick and, and your damage makes them bigger and you feel like you're skating on thin ice when you're when, when you're trying to play around a death shadow on the battlefield. And this can lead to a lot of errors and misplays both by the people playing against it as well as by the people piloting the deck. If you're thinking about building this deck, I definitely encourage you to watch some, uh, some gameplay videos by pros. Plenty of pros out there who play top tier modern decks um very well and uh you can see how how the deck plays out it's very strange i mean you are literally trying to lower your own life total as perilously low as possible in order to power up your best threat and it's dangerous and it's risky and you really have to like you know walk that tightrope when you're piloting the deck it, it requires like very precise gameplay but it's not a jank deck this has been a top tier modern deck for years there have been different builds of it there's been jund there's been esper there's been four color but grixis death shadow has been like one of the best modern decks for at least four or five years right it's been in the meta for a long time so yeah uh, there you go guys that is grixis death's shadow if you like this video and you want to see more like it i have an entire playlist dedicated to these intro to modern decks and you can find a link to that in the description below i will also leave links to some metagame tracking websites so you can look at exact deck list as well as see the most up-to-date deck list when you're watching this check those links out if you're interested but in the meantime thanks for watching everyone and i will see you in the next one